So you've been the chairman of the FCC now for two months. So I, I assume you probably have solved all the major challenges <laughs> at this point, uh, and you're moving on to the smaller ones. But um, uh, talk a little bit about you know, what you see at the agency, what, you know, what your agenda is, what are, what are the priorities that you have for the FCC? Sure. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a couple of months, Kevin. You obviously know the place well, having spent some time there. And uh, Kevin and I worked together at the FCC, um, I won't say before it was sexy, but uh, in, a different, in a different era. It it's got sexy when you and I got there. It did. Yeah. It, it, it did. It, it's, um, it's great to be back. Look, this crowd knows, uh, as well as any other crowd, the essential role that communications devices and networks play in the lives of every American. It's, uh, it's how we communicate with our families. It's how we do our work. It's how we run our businesses. It's the platform on which we innovate. It's how we get our news and information. And so I, I couldn't be more excited to be at the FCC at this time in history. Uh, we've been getting going at the FCC, starting to focus on revitalizing and retooling the agency. I'd like it to become a real model for excellence in government, especially when it comes to technology and new media. Uh, there's work to do. We can talk about that a little bit today. Um, I've spent uh, a good chunk of my time so far uh, talking to the, the staff at the FCC, meeting with people in small groups, uh, learning uh, uh, everything I can about where the agency's been, where it is, uh, but also talking with the team about uh, strategic priorities as, as, as I see them. Um, talking about the importance and thinking about our communications platform of job creation, job growth, innovation, investment, talking about universal broadband, uh, talking about the huge opportunities in mobile, talking about the huge needs around our public safety communications networks, uh, talking about the need for vibrant media in the 21st century, talking about the opportunities around renewed democracy, uh, talking about the need for the FCC to make sure that it does everything to protect and empower consumers of communication services. That's a lot. You've got a, 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 lot of, a lot of things to chew on. It's, uh, it, it's a big agenda, but the communications landscape, uh, the, the opportunity and the challenge is that communications touches everything. Uh, a, a lot of people look at communications and see it as a vertical and see it as uh, a number of issues that get debated and fought about and need to be resolved. And there are absolutely a vertical set of communications issues. But I think what we're uh, all realizing is that it's at least as important, the horizontal nature of communications is at least as important. The way that communications uh, needs to play a role, does play a role in uh, our economy and addressing major national priorities. Um, uh, that is part of what gets me energized at the FCC, and I think it's part of, uh, um, uh, part of the, the, the energy that I'm sensing at the FCC now. So let's, let's talk about broadband. That's, that's clearly a, a big one, and the FCC is now engaged in this effort to, to develop a national broadband plan. Um, talk a little bit about that, that process, both, both the substance of it and, and how you're getting the agency to go about doing it. Yeah, look, like, like so many of the questions, Kevin, that, that might come up, this is an audience that, uh, that um, uh, can teach both of us a lot about this. But let me tell you a little bit about what's going on on, on broadband, a little bit about how I look at it. Uh, to me, broadband, high-speed internet, is our generation's major infrastructure challenge. It's, it's for us what railroads were to an earlier generation, our electric grid, highways, broadband, a broadband communications infrastructure uh, will be our platform for economic opportunity and innovation in the 21st century. Uh, there's, um, and this is the good news, there's a growing consensus that this is true. It's reflected in the law that Congress passed in February as part of the Recovery Act, directing the FCC to prepare a national broadband strategy for the country. And that's what we're working on. We're following the outline laid out by Congress in the statute. We're looking at 
deployment, the portions of the country that uh, aren't, uh, that can't receive broadband. We're looking at adoption and affordability issues. Uh, there are um, uh, lots of areas of the country where you can get broadband, but where adoption rates are lower than uh, we need for them to be as a country. And the third area that Congress set out is what the, the law calls national priorities. We were asked to look at not only the deployment and adoption issues, but also the ways in which broadband can be part of the solution for healthcare, energy, education, public safety. And, uh, and we're working on that. We have a great team of, uh, of people who've come to the FCC to work on this. We've deployed uh, some of the best resources at the FCC to join the broadband task force. And we are trying to run the most open participatory uh, process that the FCC has ever run. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the month of August, the broadband task force ran two dozen open workshops at the FCC on a series of issues relating to broadband. Uh, panels of people with different views and perspectives uh, streamed online, available to participation by anyone. Uh, and um, uh, it was an experiment. Uh, I'd say the whole thing was in, was in beta. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of what the team was able to accomplish. Uh, and I think that uh, we, we, we've made real progress with this process. Uh, we had, I think, over a thousand people actually participate uh, live in the workshops. We've had several thousand more participate uh, or join or watch uh, online. This is separate from the people who are commenting. Uh, you know, I know for, for a lot of the folks here who are rolling out businesses, uh, you know, seeking to reach millions of users, these numbers seem small. But for an agency like the FCC, having thousands of people participate directly in the process uh, in ways that really are meaningful and that'll become more and more meaningful uh, it, it's, uh, it's an exciting thing, and it's the beginning of experimentation with participatory government that we're um, uh, excited about. Yeah, I think that's what gets people excited, because you know, the, the agency, to, to the folks who are not in the regulatory process regularly, can seem this kind of mysterious thing. You, you need to understand particular kinds of rules and how you file and so forth. Uh, I mean, do you think this can become a, a real model for how the FCC and potentially other agencies can, can open up to the public? Well, uh, we're going to keep on experimenting with techniques that do exactly that. You know, there's nothing wrong with um, uh, lawyers participating in the FCC process. Uh, it's just that they shouldn't be the only people, uh, Washington lawyers who are hired to come and, and file comments at the FCC. We need to make that process easier. We need to find ways to make that more substantive and meaningful. But we also need to make sure that the doors of the FCC are open to anyone who has something of value to add. If you're an economics professor uh, at uh, the University of New Mexico and you have some information, some analysis, some thoughts on, on anything that we're doing, broadband, spectrum, anything else, uh, you shouldn't have to hire a lawyer, come to Washington, to, uh, or come to Washington to tell the FCC what you think. We need to find ways to allow people like that to participate. We need to find ways to allow ordinary citizens to express uh, their views in the context of FCC proceedings. We need to uh, find ways for the FCC to engage directly with people at businesses who have real hands-on experience, concrete information that'll be helpful to getting this right for the country, none of this is easy. Uh, uh, obviously, new media and technology creates new opportunities to do this. We're confronting issues around the, um, uh, the, the rules that govern the ways in which the FCC can take comments and, uh, and, and issue its decisions. But we're gonna, work, we're gonna work through those. Obviously, there are other people uh, in government who are, who are focused on that as well. I know some of them have, have been here, our, our new CTO, Anish Chopra, and our new CIO, Vivek Kundra, and, Beth Novak, who's focusing on, on, um, uh, on open government issues. So there's a lot of work to do. Uh, we're trying to get as fast to start as we can. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's, let's talk a little more about the, about the, the subject, the uh, substance, I mean, the, the broadband plan. Uh, you, you mentioned this a little bit before. You talked about communications being horizontal. I mean, the, the, the title of this session is, is broadband as a platform. 
So, so how do you see the value of broadband as, as an enabler for other sorts of things? That's a good question. You know, I didn't know the title of the session was Broadband as a Platform, but I'm glad that it is because, that, you know, that means what we're trying to do is, is, is maybe sinking in mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, broadband, I think, is a platform uh, in, in three ways. Mm -hmm. It's a platform for economic opportunity and innovation. It's how increasingly jobs will be created and also searched for. Uh, it, it'll be um, a major, if not the main source of innovation. Uh, we can make real progress uh, on economic growth by thinking about broadband this way. So one, broadband is a platform for economic opportunity and innovation. Two, uh, broadband is a platform for addressing major national priorities that uh, whose solutions can be accelerated by, made more cost effective by broadband. This is true of, of healthcare. Uh, there's increasing recognition, for example, that uh, 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 making medical records electronic is part of the long-term solution to healthcare, uh, and that we need not only to make medical records electronic, but we need to make sure that they can move around appropriately from hospitals and clinics and doctors, et cetera. So we need that connectivity piece. Uh, on education, there's a growing recognition that broadband uh, uh, is essential to bringing the best of education to rural parts of the country, giving everyone opportunity. I see real opportunities in broadband for things like community colleges, tutoring. Uh, energy is obviously another example, the relationship between smart grid and our broadband infrastructure, the ways in which broadband can help people visualize energy use, make it more likely, easier for people to save energy. Uh, broadband as a platform for helping address public safety. Uh, there's, uh, 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 we want to have first responders in this country, uh, this is an important reminder the day before 9-11, to have the benefits of 21st century communications tools. Uh, um, uh, whether it's live streaming video, other kinds of tools, whether it's uh, ambulance, workers who arrive at the scene of an accident and have the ability to use broadband to communicate with emergency room doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an extraordinary challenge around public safety and broadband. None of these things will be solved um, by February when we issue uh, our strategy, and none of them will be solved really soon, but we need to get the country on a path toward deploying broadband, deploying the internet as effectively as possible to accelerate solutions to this. And last, sorry for, no. for, for, for going on, but broadband uh, is a platform for, for Government 2.0. Uh, it's what we need in order to achieve uh, some of the key goals of deploying technology to help bring government into the 21st century in a series of ways. Um, we're trying at the FCC to bring it into the 21st century, and I wanted to acknowledge um, uh, uh, some people who are here, maybe in the audience, uh, who are working very hard on this. Uh, our managing director, Steve Van Rokel, uh, uh, picked up and left his job to come to the FCC to, to work on uh, 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 helping bring the FCC into the 21st century, and he's just gotten the agency off to a great start, along with uh, his SWAT team of people who are working 28 hours uh, a day, every day. Um, uh, Haley Van Dyke is here from our broadband, uh, I'm sorry, from our, our broadband team in the managing director's office as well, our new media team. Uh, and um, Eugene Huang is here. Eugene is a key part of our broadband team. He's a former secretary of technology in Virginia. He spent time in the Treasury Department. Uh, and he's working on ways that we can deploy broadband to help uh, improve the operations of government and uh, how to think about the operations of government as well as a way to spur broadband. And actually, if, uh, um, uh, uh, if I could, Eugene is here and he's working on some concrete ideas on how we could potentially deploy uh, the people in this audience and others to help generate ideas on this. And, and, and I'd love to ask Eugene to come up for a minute and describe what he's working on. Um, Unless Great. you're having no, coffee get, get with Eugene someone. Out. Sure. Eugene. Eugene Wong. Great. Thank you, Julius. Um, so, 
this entire conference has been about Gov 2.0 and how we revolutionize government with these new technology tools. Um, and so far, it's been very clear that broadband and web technologies have had a transformative impact upon the federal government. Um, it's been able to strengthen our democracy and make government more accessible to the public. But often these transformations have not realized their full potential. Uh, the presentation right before us talked about how progress has stopped at static web pages, streaming multimedia, and basic online transactions, uh, such as paying taxes online. Um, and in many cases, the federal government penalizes you for attempting to complete a transaction online uh, by imposing surcharges for online transactions. Um, and although there has been a proliferation of websites um, that the federal government manage, uh, manages, uh, Vivek talked about 20,000 federal government websites this morning, um, there's only been very slow embrace and adoption of Web 2.0 technologies and web-based business processes. Uh, so several questions remain about this intersection of Web 2.0 and Gov 2.0. How will we incorporate these innovations and embrace future technologies to further improve and transform the delivery of government services? And how will we embrace new ways to access and share content to revolutionize our society and change the nature of civic engagement? One thing is certain, although the federal government has had a major role in creating the internet, the private sector has led the public sector in adopting web-based innovation. And in fact, in certain cases, the situation has gotten so bad that in some cases, some may wonder today whether government innovation is an oxymoron or whether government is capable of embracing web-based innovation. Now, the message that I think we've heard over the past two days in this stage is that this is beginning to change. Um, the president and his team, including Julius, uh, Vivek and Anish, uh, want to be innovation leaders and not just followers, partnering with the private sector to engage the American people in ways that just a few years ago seemed unimaginable. Uh, the president is committed to transforming government into a platform for innovation, to empower individuals and increase opportunity for all Americans. And as one example, this morning many of you heard from Vivek Kundra, uh, the federal CIO, who launched the data.gov transparency initiative, which has led to a number of new applications created for the Apps for America competition. Now, we're still only in the very early stages of understanding how the creative and innovative use of web-enabled technologies will continue to transform our government and our society. We're still growing, learning, and adapting. And the big question is, what are the steps that the federal government must take, to borrow a phrase from Tim O'Reilly, to turn itself into a platform for innovation? So yesterday, Tim asked Anish how to provide input into this process. Um, and here's how you can provide input into the National Broadband Plan. What we recognize is that we don't have all the answers and we don't have all the ideas. Uh, and we want your help. Uh, since many of you, many of the best minds in this industry are in this room today. We want this plan to be truly a model of collaboration between all of you who wish to improve government operations and increase civic engagement using the tremendous technological innovations at our fingertips today and the future innovations we are developing for tomorrow. In the past few days, uh, we've heard some consistent themes that we're going to take back to the National Broadband Plan, turning government into a wholesale provider of data, ensuring machine-readable data, and leveraging open source software. And I encourage you to keep providing us with these ideas, ideas that we can take back and incorporate into the National Broadband Plan, because the plan provides us a tremendous opportunity to dream and turn dreams into a vision for this country. And so I'm going to leave with you three challenges of questions that you can help us address. Uh, the first one is how can broadband and online technologies transform government and civic engagement? And some examples that we've heard, we heard yesterday Tom Steinberg um, and what he's been doing in the UK, and this morning what Carl Mommel had in terms of an inspiring vision for what government should be doing. What can and should the government continue to do? Uh, the second one is what role can the government play in facilitating broadband deployment and the adoption of broadband services? For example, we're looking at ways that the government uh, can serve as an eff effective aggregator of demand to extend broadband to underserved areas. And the third question is, how can broadband be used to improve government and government programs? And one such idea is, should we launch competitions throughout the government, um, such as a bigger version of Apps for Democracy, to stimulate innovation? Um, as, a, as Julius will describe, uh, we're extending our virtual hand today and we encourage each of you to collaborate with us through social media and crowdsourcing to help develop the National Broadband Plan. 
Uh, we're launching our new clearinghouse for social networks and other citizenship engagement today um, at www.fcc.gov slash connect. Includes our blog, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Ideascale, a whole bunch of other platforms. Um, and what we encourage you to do is give us your thoughts, give us your ideas. Um, and our hope is together we can create a national broadband plan that will transform the United States into a model for the Gov 2.0 world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eugene. Well, so that's, you know, we don't have too much more time, but that's a good segue to the last thing I wanted to ask you about, which is, you know, what's, what's your vision of Gov 2.0 at the FCC? Um, first, let's bring people in like Eugene. Uh, and, and I mean this seriously, and empower them uh, to do what they know how to do. And, and um, uh, I just couldn't be happier with the energy that, that, uh, uh, and, and the brilliance of, of, of the team and thinking through what can we do. Here, here's how I look at Government 2.0 and, uh, and how I think about it in the context of the FCC. I, I, uh, I think about three categories of activity or three sets of goals. One is communication. Um, using new media and technology, government using new media and technology to communicate more effectively with the American people, with all of the constituencies who have an interest in what a government agency like the FCC is doing. We all know that technology and new media uh, creates new uh, opportunities for reaching out to and explaining what government is doing. The second major category, as I see it, is participation, using uh, technology and new media to enhance the participation of as broad a group as possible in the activities of an agency like the FCC. And the third category that I think about is data. Uh, uh, how can government most effectively deploy the public's data in a way that leverages the brilliance and insight and energy and innovation and entrepreneurship of, of, of people on the outside. And, you know, as, as, as Eugene said, as you've noted, we're just getting started at the FCC. Uh, we um, uh, have a platform to start with at the FCC uh, as to which there's both good news and, and bad news. So I, I, I'm going to reveal to this crowd a secret that many people uh, uh, won't know. Uh, Kevin Warbach, when he was at the FCC, uh, conceived of, designed, and built the FCC website. This was in the mid-1990s. Uh, and actually, for its day, it was an incredible accomplishment. Um, uh, it showed real leadership, and in fact, I think in 1998, the FCC's website won an award as the best website in, uh, in government, and it was a great thing. Kevin uh, left the agency, and, um, and I suspect now kind of in, um, uh, uh, out of respect for Kevin, <laughs> uh, apparently the decision was made not to touch his work. <laughs> and so you can go to the FCC website now and you can see pretty much uh, what it looked like um, uh, 10 years ago. And of course that's a problem and, and, and it's been improved to a certain extent over the years. But it's not what it can be, it's not what it should be. And as Steve Van Rokel and Eugene and the other people I've mentioned are kind of tackling this, uh, they're working within the, the buckets that I mentioned. So thinking about communication and participation. Uh, we launched, our focus right now is on broadband because we have a tight deadline on that. We've, we've launched broadband.gov. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in beta. It's the beginnings of an effort to communicate clearly and encourage participation. We've launched a, a, a blog, Blogband which um, uh, staffers are, are, are actively blogging on. One of the things I'm uh, proudest of with respect to our blog is that it's been uh, seriously substantive, uh, both with respect to what FCC staffers are writing on the blog, and of course that generates substantive comments back. Uh, it's very healthy, it's very good. We, we started video blogging uh, yesterday. We did our first video blog. We're uh, starting to use social media uh, as quickly and as aggressively as we can. Eugene uh, mentioned several things. We, um, uh, two weeks ago, the FCC had, I think, one RSS feed. Today, it has 50. Uh, we're deploying Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, et cetera, uh, largely as an experiment to see how we can best uh, engage. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting things that, that we're doing on the communications and on the participation side. 
um, uh, but we're committed to, to, to uh, uh, moving as, as quickly as we can. One of the things we're doing uh, internally, we launched uh, a site called reboot.fcc.gov, which is uh, uh, an internal platform, an internal forum for, for generating ideas and how to pr improve the agency. Uh, we're going to launch that externally at well to give the public a chance to engage with us on how to improve the FCC overall, how to improve its new media and technology operations. Uh, and last, in the third category, data, extremely important. One of the things that I did uh, very early after I got to the FCC was launch uh, a data review. Um, uh, our head of our strategic planning office, um, just incredibly brilliant and talented, a uh, fellow named Paul Dessa, who had uh, been at McKinsey for the last several years, is running this and is looking uh, at three different buckets of, of um, activities around data. One, how does the FCC collect data? Uh, are we collecting the data we need? Are we collecting data that we don't need? Second, our analysis of data, are we doing that um, uh, the way we should? And third, the dissemination of data, uh, with the goal toward making sure that the public's data is available to the public in machine readable, searchable formats. We get confidential information, we'll keep that confidential, but the public's data shouldn't be locked up in file rooms or impossible to find on the FCC or in PDFs that no one can search. All right, well, we're, we're running over time. I mean, there's, there's lots more we could talk about. I, I, I will say you, you have my full permission uh, and cooperation <laughs> in, in revamping the website. You know, the, the web has come a long way since 1996, and that's, that's, it's long overdue. Um, do you have any, any final words uh, to leave the, the crowd with? Well, you know, one, uh, one thing. I, I, I am excited about the incredible entrepreneurs and innovators who've, who've come to the FCC. Um, uh, if, if, if I could accomplish... Uh, one thing at the FCC uh, in my time there would be to unleash the power of innovation and entrepreneurs who are out there to take advantage of our communications infrastructure to drive positive change in the country. I've been very fortunate in, in my career. I've worked with some of the best innovators and entrepreneurs uh, in the world. Uh, I'm humbled by what great entrepreneurs and innovators do. I have incredible respect for their role in American progress. And, and, and I do have one thought, which is, which is this. Um, the innovators and entrepreneurs who I know uh, over the course of their careers move from project to project, venture to venture. Of course, it's becoming less common in general that people stay in one job all their careers, but it's really common in the uh, entrepreneurial community to roll up your sleeves with something for a few years, uh, uh, hit some goals, then move on to the next thing. Um, I would ask, I would hope, that people from this community think about public service as one of their next ventures. We need that kind of creativity, talent, knowledge inside government, uh, spending some time helping drive these accomplishments. Uh, there are some people who've raised their hand uh, and said uh, uh, they've asked to do it. Steve Van Roekel, who I didn't know before, called me. Uh, and said he'd been in the private sector working in technology for a number of years, but he thought this was his time to help contribute to improving the efficiency, the operations of government, uh, and here he is. So, uh, so if, I could, if I could leave this crowd uh, with one thing, it would be that uh, please consider public service as your next venture, whether it's the FCC or some other place in government. We really, we really do need your special talents. Right. Here, here. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>